Senator Smith, Senator Cortez Masto uh, from, from Nevada from her office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to the panelists uh, joining us today. I think we're all horrified um, by the tornadoes that we've seen that have devastated families and communities last week. Um, I, I, along, I know with all my colleagues, uh, express my deepest regrets to the families and friends of those who, who died, lost their homes or businesses. But what we are also seeing disasters are becoming more frequent and uh, more devastating. When they occur, it is imperative that the federal government comes to the aid of people who have lost everything. So uh, Dr. Uh, Martin and Mr. Sprayberry, let me ask you this. Uh, I introduced the Western Wildfire Support Act, um, which would allow communities in Nevada and across the West to access training equipment and funding they need to combat the increasing amount of land at risk uh, of burnover. We are seeing wildfires that are no longer seasons, they're hotter or longer, um, and they have a devastating uh, impact on our communities. But here's my question. Can you both talk about what a reauthorization of the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Program means for frontline communities in states like Nevada that need help to combat wildfires frequently on land owned by the federal government. Remember about 85% of the land in Nevada is owned by the federal government. And can you also address um, how important um, the program is to take into account critical habitat and ecosystems uh, at risk of disaster as well uh, because of the wildfires um, uh, that we are seeing? Um, Dr. Martin and, Dr. and Mr. Sprager, I'm gonna ask you both if you could address that. Certainly. Thank you, uh, Senator. The, um, certainly, frontline communities are first and foremost in CWGDR's planning um, and uh, the eligible activities uh, um, uh, and beneficiaries that are allowed from the program. And so looking at those that are going to be suffering from particular kinds of um, uh, uh, hazard events, uh, that may or may not get the presidential declaration is part of the long term community benefit, right? A community planning that um, CDBTR provides as a benefit to incorporate into the recovery framework. So I, um, I uh, certainly appreciate that comment and that focus on that specific kind of frontline community. Um, and I'll pass it to my colleague first before I respond to the second question. Well, so. We don't have a whole lot of wildfires here in North Carolina. We've had some, but uh, I would say that, um, you know, anything that, you know, is going to help a frontline community, any program, you know, we, we've all got to look at it, take a holistic view and make sure that we're doing whatever we can, because even though, um, you know, maybe you didn't have so many, you uh, wildfires back in the 2000s we know that now it's it's a normal course of action you're going to have wildfires from year year over year uh, just like uh, hurricanes here in north carolina uh, we saw the wind event in iowa so what are we going to do as a nation to take a look at the existing programs to help our frontline communities so i think that uh, it's something that we should look at and maybe um, understand what the hazard is, what the threat is, and how we can address it with the programs that are existing. And uh, the other comment around uh, sort of the land use planning, for example, the land is, that is controlled by federal government versus others. And that's, again, uh, because it's in HUD, and HUD um, has a very specific role in managing and understanding local plan, uh, planning issues. Um, and housing development issues. Uh, HUD can certainly use its uh, resources to ensure that people are trained about where not to build, not to further build, as well as what kind of protections can be made for communities that are already on um, at, at hazard's edge. Thank you. Uh, and let me, I've only got a few minutes left, but let me touch on uh, uh, the bill that Senator Tester talked about, Reforming Disaster Recovery Act of 2021. I know there were several recommendations uh, for how to improve the funding that comes from the CDBGDR. And can Dr. Martin or Mr. Sprayberg, can you speak to the data sharing provisions in the bill and why is accurate data so important to have? And that uh, clearly there's a concern that it's not, not the accurate data we have and need right now. 
Well, thank you for that question. And I can I can tell you that, you know, we need to make sure before the bill is passed that those data sharing provisions have been well vetted. It's so critical that FEMA and uh, and HUD share that information so that, you know, there isn't a duplication of benefits. And as we move forward, because duplication of benefits and how uh, we actually check on those takes a lot of time and it costs a lot of money. And so the more data that can be shared between FEMA and HUD, um, the better it will be and it will make for a more efficient operation. So that's one thing I'm glad you asked that question because we certainly need to make sure that that's in the legislation uh, and it is, but we just need to make sure that before it gets passed that it's well vetted and then good to go with both agencies. When you ask a question about uh, data, Senator, that is music to a researcher's ear. Um, so I'm happy to say that um, there are probably two counts of data. One is the kind of data that my colleague panelist was mentioning, sort of the operational data. Um, that would include um, everything from details about the beneficiaries that have been coming from other parts of the federal government. FEMA, FEMA individual assistance, for example, is the first first federal uh, intervention in these communities' lives. And so understanding demographics about that community, understanding um, um, any uh, requirements that have occurred operationally, including um, not environmental review to answer, to add on to the previous question that you had, that is required for every property. So there are so many pieces of data that have occurred operationally that is helpful for HUD to receive and to, uh, to operationalize. But the, in the legislation, the data that is being referred to is more uh, granular uh, demographic data about the beneficiaries. And certainly that is um, would be helpful for HUD to have as well as the federal government to have because of its other statutory requirements, the, the constitutional requirements on civil rights, um, et cetera. So have, making sure that HUD is able to collect that data and do analysis. and in some cases, share it uh, at an aggregate, le aggregate level uh, to the public to confirm that the right people are being served. Thank you again. Thank you, Senator Cortez Masto. Uh, 